especially ladies, young ladies in high school. Those girls are not your friends. You can have acquaintances, but I think that you make friends in your adulthood because you know how to vet people. When you're in high school, those are just people you're around because you guys are in school. You know what I'm saying? Hey, it's your girl Adriana and thank you for coming to another one of my videos. This video is called, Did That Really Happen To Me? Cuckoo Edition. So before I started my video, I just wanted to say I just got out of the gym. I feel amazing. I've been losing a lot of weight and I just wanted to put a quick little message out there. Show up for yourself, your damn self. If you want to go to the gym and see results, you're not going to see it in like three, four months, you know. Um, and yeah, just eat good. Do what you want to do, like exercise. Don't think about the gym as like, fuck, this is something I got to do. I challenge you to sometimes go to the gym and just do what feels good for your body. And then once you get in the hang of that, then you can be like, okay, now I want to work on my core. Then your your body is already used to being active, so it's ready for a routine. Then, then start, you know, working on the parts of your body that you feel like. And even if you just go for it to feel good... Just go for it to feel good because eventually your body is going to thank you. Your body is going to slim down, tone up, like you're going to look good, feel good. That's why right now I look red like a tomato. Um, and yeah, anyway. Okay, so first on my list, I have, I used to work for a cult and didn't know it till I got out. <laughs> so I used to work for this company that pretty much sold vacuums door to door and they pretty much convinced us to work 80 hours a motherfucking week and barely get paid anything and i had to pay them money yeah you heard right so this company would bunch us up in this illegal ass van that didn't have any seat belts and crazy ass doors and whatnot and usually a drunk or a drug addict would be leading the van driving the van we would drive for from state to state sometimes. We would stay in these raggedy ass hotels and they would literally convince us that we're better than doctors. We make more money than doctors. We make a thousand dollars an hour. And it's like with any sales job, of course, you could be successful and yeah, you can make that money. But it's like it's not always that consistent, especially this door to door sales. Very, very sketchy. And when you would have like a really, really good week and you would sell a lot of vacuums and you made like $5,000, they would take away from the hotel fee, the van fee, and they wouldn't provide food. So you, you would already spend hella money on food and all of a sudden you had a $2,500 check, but you only got half of it this week and then half of it next week, plus you already owe from that week. It was crazy. And then when you would ask for your money, you would be like, no, give me all my money right now. Like I have all these sales. Do you see these? I have their phone numbers. They all have their um, vacuums. They were all A loans. They blah, 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 blah. And they would straight up look at you and be like, you're difficult to work with. You don't have to work here. Run me my money. Ooh, it was literally a cult. And then they would like chant their like chants. Oh my God. They were all losers, all low lives. And so was I, cause I was there and I stayed there for a few years. And it's like, I was a loser. Oh my God, little mama, you were such a loser. You were such a loser. Oh my God, I was such a loser. Anyways, we're on to bigger and better things. I don't know if I should say this one. Fuck it, I'm gonna say it. I'm not gonna get too into detail because this is just a rapid fire. Um, so when I was in high school, basically my friend tried to sell me to her cousin. To her girl cousin. She was like, no, she's gonna show you how to do things and she's gonna show you... Um, she's gonna mentor you and blah 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 little did i know her cousin was in some shit and they were trying to convince me to do the same thing and once i caught on obviously i 
the fuck up out of there but it was just crazy how was my friend from high school and she literally tried to traffic me like the bitch tried to traffic me and then one time i saw her like at a taco spot and i was like bro your cousin did this this and that and like she this this and that and the moment i caught on that she was in on it was when she was like she would never hurt you i don't know what you're talking about don't worry i'll call her and i'm like bitch you knew you fucking knew that's why ladies and gentlemen especially ladies young ladies in high school those girls are not your friends you can have acquaintances but i think that you make friends in your adulthood because you know how to vet people when you're in high school those are just people you're around because you guys are in school you know what I'm saying? Don't call those people your friends. Call them acquaintances. You know, be solid with them. Be cool with them. Be honest and humble and loyal. But don't do too much. Don't don't be... Now I understand why my mom was like, you can have no friends over. They can be outside and play. Um, This is your home. Don't bring people here. And now I feel it because it's like... These shysty little bitches. Moving on. Number three. My coworker attacked me. So when I was in this cult, you know, like I said, there was a lot of low lives. But I was also a low life because I was there. But I had potential. That's why I got the fuck up out of there. And people that left also have potential and they, they found their value because they're not there anymore. That place was trash. Okay. Especially because they would work you like a dog and then they wouldn't pay you and then they would make you feel guilty about wanting your own money. It was just crazy psychological warfare in that bitch. Crazy fucking cult. Anyways, okay. Um, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, so I sold this fucking vacuum and I had like $1,200 commission on it, right? Because it was a full pop i sold it for a full price and he had excellent credit so the financing company gave us full whatever the fuck i don't even know commission i don't know um paid us out 80 percent of the loan because they had amazing credit oh that actually makes sense okay <clears throat> so when i was walking back to the van with my empty vacuum box this lowlife that thought he was the ish, he um, he got jealous pretty much that I do what I did and I was newer than him and he was mad that he couldn't do it. So he pretty much, when I went in the van, he was just like calling me names, calling me bad words and I'm a lady and I know I can't fight this man so i'm just quiet not saying nothing and then my other low life manager that was driving um he was the owner of the company or whatever and um he wasn't telling him to stop so there's just two men well little old me is in the back of the van like right here and then he's driving and the low life number two is right there and i was really fucking pissed and I was like, but at the same time, I was scared. So I was like, yeah, um, uneducated people just use uh, vulgar language because they're not educated enough to express their frustration any any other way. So I understand why you're cussing me out and calling me out of my name. And he fucking lost his shit, bro. He started. <laughs> and I was like. Are you okay? And then um, the manager drives me to the next house to do another um, uh, presentation because we would go in and show how good this vacuum worked. And then, do you want to buy it? Blah, blah, blah. Um, I opened the van. And then I opened the van door. And I had my legs out. I was coming out. And then this fucking rhino opens the van and like like he opens the door all the way and then he slams it on my knee and like <laughs> i heard my knee pop and then i was like oh shit so i got in and he starts just slamming the door open and closing open and closing and now that i think about it it's just a little funny because it was like he was literally throwing 
an adult tantrum, which is crazy and scary at the same time. So don't do what I did. Completely ignore and get the fuck away from them. Anyways, and don't leave a cult. Once you know it's shady, get the fuck out. It never gets better, okay? Okay. So he just starts slamming like a rhino the door. And I'm all the way over here to this side of the van. I'm all the way over here. And then the manager, like, grabs him, and he's like, calm down, chill out, blah, 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 blah. And, yeah, he went in the house, and he did the presentation. I'm like, dang, people just be letting shady-ass people in their homes. That's why when people knock on your door, please don't open. Please don't let them in. You don't know who the fuck you're letting in. Anyways, moving on. Okay, so number four. A man on bar tried to be my sugar father. Well, I already did a video about this um, a few years back. I think I was pregnant when I did this. And yeah, I was pretty much just a young girl. I was on BART going to work. And um, this guy, really old, just um, I think he was Indian. He sat next to me and he was just like, hey, I have a house in the hills and I work really hard and I got a lot of money. Um, do you want to come hang out sometime? And I was like, no, I'm good. And he was like, you know, it'll be a really fun time and blah, 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 blah. blah. And I actually started recording because I was like, this is kind of weird and my friends are not going to believe me. So let me record this. Um, so I was like, I'm good. And then everybody in BART, mind you, it was really, really packed. And everybody was just like looking around at each other. And I'm looking at them like, I'm scared. Can some of y'all help me? Nobody said shit. Everybody was just awkward. And uh, he was like sweating. It was weird. And he had like a suit on with a briefcase. Maybe he wanted to traffic me. I don't know what was going on. Um, and I was like, how old are you? And he was like, oh, I'm 43 or whatever. Or 48 something. And I was like, oh, that's my dad's age. Yeah, you and my dad would probably be good friends you know my dad i live with my dad dad so no i don't want to hang out with you um and he was like okay or whatever and then when bart stopped he like got the fuck up and left and i was just like okay and then everybody like and there was somebody that was like hey are you okay are you good and i was like yeah i'm good i mean he left already so I'm good. Like, I'm just going to work. Um, moving on. Okay, number five. This one's actually a good one. Um, I actually applied for a job that was, like, way over what I've ever made before and, like, way over my league, I thought. But then I got hired, and I'm working there right now. Hey, I was like, ooh, salary. Let me put, let me plug these numbers in. Ooh, this position. Never been in this position. Let me play it. Fuck it. What is it going to hurt? literally like a few days later can you come in for an interview we think you'd be great actually it probably wasn't out of my league because it has to do with like uh, maintaining cash and like other people's finances and i have experience in that like um i used to be a realtor well i have my license but uh it's a conflict of interest so i'm inactive agent right now um but you know i'm familiar with the field of financing and stuff like that and you know money management and financial reviews and things like that so i guess it wasn't my league i guess i just underestimated myself anyway so that goes to show ladies and gents never underestimate yourself because you would be surprised trust me go out there you surprise yourself you surprise yourself today now um and yeah so that's it and i'll be back for funny edition on the next video so make sure you guys tune in